G'day Space Engineers and welcome back to Dronely, the only survival playthrough designed to teach you everything you need to know on drones, automation in the vanilla aspect of Space Engineers. Let's get stuck into it. I've got a massive episode in store for you today, including getting this second upgraded drone drill that I will be uploading to the workshop and mod.io and all that good jazz very, very soon. But we need to set this thing up on a new ore patch so we can start pulling in all that sorts of good stuff as well as building up, as I flick to my character, a new smart AI cargo drones, no mods, DLC scripts, nothing like that. Let's get rid of all these GPSs. We'll be setting it up as well on that new drill as well as everything in between. But before we get to that, I really need to explain what I've done off camera because apart from that short three minute video in the top right hand corner of your screen right now, I haven't really shown much and a lot has changed. Before I had one entry and I had one exit through these doors, but now we've got one entry here and another entry just so we can access both sides of the planet as well as having only one entrance into the actual drone hub itself. So we've got, sorry, we've got two exits. We've got the exit there and the exit there, and then the entrance to the drone hub here to clarify that. Sorry about that. I did just get over losing my voice for the last week and a half, and that's why I haven't been able to record, edit, or upload as it's all solely done by me. But we've got the only entrance here for the drones just so they can dock on up while another drone separated from the other one can go ahead and trigger itself go out that door or go out that door whatever it may be so let's try and go ahead and start explaining what everything does just here so i'm going to go ahead and go into this ai recorder block on the drone itself if i can start scrolling down there it is ai recorder let's go to the ai move to begin with so i can explain just from the beginning with these drones you need to have collision avoidance off and precision mode on at all times yes i know you'll need to maneuver the drones around any voxels or obstacles or whatever it may be but that is the way the drones work also another little note if you have them both on five and five when you're in the actual planetary gravity they the drone itself will actually start reaching a lot higher speeds because it has a better maneuverability freedom to go ahead and move about etc so let's go ahead and trigger this up asap so before i do that i'm going to activate and show the sensor field range that i've kind of set up off camera to show you how my drone and the base itself works so i'm going to start that up one second delay and there's the trigger so this is what we're going to be setting up and building in this episode except on a different drill explaining everything in between and all that good jazz so we've got one sensor here just on the ground that's going to tell the door to uh increase the velocity on that hinge right there once it gets to this secondary sensor right there, it'll tell it to reverse, aka decrease that velocity, just so it'll allow it to open faster than what it does to close, so it can move out of the way of the higher speed drone that it is incoming. So you may have seen this in a previous episode on the Dronely series. If you're not, we're going to do this once again. So this is actually using waypoints. This does not use GPSs in any way, shape or form because it's using the AI recorder block. So what it's going to do is going to follow a certain amount of waypoints that I'm going to show you, set up everything manually, everything in between in this episode to show what's happening here. So when it gets to this waypoint four, AKA the one just above the connector on that drill drone that we had previously, this is an older design of this blueprint that i will be uploading soon and that's why it's kind of not looking like it should be because it kind of broken that i had to fix it etc so once it gets there it'll trigger a certain event controller that i will be explaining in the future that just allows it to come on down onto this connector that may or may not be in that position at that time i'll explain what i mean by that very soon but before we do that what this cargo drone is waiting for is for its cargo itself to fill up to 100% or what I've set it to above 99.5. Once it actually gets to that target of cargo space, I've got it to trigger an RTB timer. 
You need four timers for any drone to work. You need to tell it to load at your drill or platform, whatever it may be. One to unload, whether it be at your base, as well as another two to tell it to trigger, go and do its job, and to return to base. That's what that RTB timer is for. That's gonna tell it to turn its thrusters on, change a, a few things I have, where in this drone, it is extremely, extremely, this is actually my dumb one, funny enough, as it's missing all of these panels to actually tell if it is damaged or not, and whether to flee or do other sort of specific programmed settings I've got in its vanilla timer blocks, event controllers, no scripts, DLCs, mods, as I explained. So it goes back on a separate AI remote block. So let's go into the drones thing right here. So it's finished off that first recorder where it just went to the drill and told it to load. Now it's telling it to go back home, which is severely underneath where the exiting drone would be. So it's nice and clear. There's no pathfinding issues. You wouldn't be overrunning a one-way street per se. And this works out rather similarly to the way the actual other entrance or exit doors over there open and close. It's just once you get into the certain sensor range, it'll increase that velocity on that door's hinge. And once it actually reaches into a secondary sensor, it will actually tell it to decrease that velocity nice and easy. So with this extra five degree tilt, that's why this is like kind of slightly off at an angle and like pointed down or whatever it may be. So once it's gone into that sensor range, it'll just zoom on in here nice and quickly. I'll even bring this up so you can see how fast it goes because it wouldn't normally reach this speed if it didn't have that five degree kind of leeway. And the reason why I'm using the AI recorder block and not the remote block or the AI basic block is for the fact that those ones specifically use GPSs which in a previous episode I have shown exactly why on that drone specifically which I may do in the next episode if you are curious just comment down below if you want any more information I always reply to any comment or question whether it may be so if I stand right here they should turn off if I should go away they should turn back on again nice and easy I've actually got more than one sensor so I've got this sensor right here looking at all four of those welders to repair this drone with its flea function or not this one but the one I will be building up in this episode so it's very simple it just hit a secondary sensor to close that door came on over very simple but as I was saying with waypoints it'll go from waypoint to waypoint in a straight line directly with GPS's it'll actually go up and over towards each GPS that is placed and that is set in its remote block or AI basic block, whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and start printing off this drone that I've already got set up. Let's go ahead and turn that on. I'm just gonna make sure that it is completely survival as we always are. Just I'm always in creative mode in testings and stuff like that. So it's always good for me to check. Let's turn all of these welders on. So it actually starts printing up. Excellent. Oh, I love this bit. This is so much easier than having to hand weld everything. Just by whacking a piston there, a piston there. And if you are curious, I'll go into the welder or the, the piston itself. And they're set to 0.43 as its full extension where it would start printing out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to decrease the velocity of both of these pistons by 0.5 meters a second. So it'll go from a positive 0.43 out pushing to a negative 0.7 meters a second. In other words, retracting and allowing this printer to build up. So let's go ahead and just go and decrease that velocity nice and slowly. So now it'll set those pistons to be really quite slow at 0.07 in a negative. So they are retracting and that's how printers and that all sorts of things kind of work. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's just hover over this and we've got 100%, 418 blocks out of 418 blocks. Absolutely fantastic. And this is slightly different because now this is the proper drone. Before I forget, I'm going to, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. 
And I don't think I'll be able to get into it because it has no... What's the name? Excellent. I can't believe I did that. I forgot to connect it. All right, well, let me fix this and I'll be right back. Let's just print up another one so you can see a whole thing in a little time lapse, I guess. So I'll be back in a second. I honestly really don't care about the resources, so let's just turn that back off and do that. So nice. So let's just reset this printer by... Oh, actually, I just turned that off. So let's just increase the velocity, and you can do that multiple times, so it kind of pushes them a lot faster and resets everything a lot quicker. So let's just hit that button once or twice so it starts to retracting, and we can just continue on by turning the welders back on and starting once more. Let's go and get a nice little view of this thing, shall we? There we go. It's so fast to print this sort of thing up. And the way this drone has to be set up in its blueprinting is absolutely insanity for the fact that groups may be triggered over multiple drones with the same group name, among other things. So let's go ahead and just decrease the velocity once more it'll start retracting it nice and easy just so i can start catching up to begin with get that connector connected etc etc so this time i won't forget what i need to do so before i do anything let's go ahead and turn the welders off decrease the velocity more so it goes out of the way faster i need to go into here and i need to trigger the h2 swap timer which will tell the thrusters to turn off and the stock the um, hydrogen tanks to be on stockpile like they are now so now i can go ahead and connect these up oh i don't know why that is on but let's turn that off hmm. and then let's go ahead and fix this up nice and quick there we go so that's not in the way anymore excellent 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 uh how much tank how much fuel we got we got almost 100 percent on all i think i've got like 12 tanks on this thing at the moment so Let's go ahead and turn that projector off because we got 100% out of 100%. I am sure of it. And what we need to do now is we need to fly up on top of the drone and we need to get in control of it. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Actually, what I might do is go directly into its terminal like this and go to the remote block that we just need for the placement of the waypoints. So before we actually do this, I actually have to go and get the drill drone set up before we can get this thing out and about. So let's go ahead and zip on down. I'm not really using the elevator. I haven't got anything heavy to kind of bring up just yet. But it works as is and it's actually really rather good so far. I just need to slow it down just a little bit. So let's get this thing operational. And the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to turn the thrusters on, the drill thrusters. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and I need to set this sorter to the ore I'm setting it to. What one am I doing it? Drill cobalt. Drill silver. Okay. All right. First up, let's get this drill out and about, shall we? I've got a silver deposit just over there that I can actually go ahead and possibly reach with the extension of this drill. It's about 35, 40 meters below the surface, and then it starts drilling out when it starts finding any ore that you set in this sorter. So I've set it to silver ore in just a second. Let's get the correct one in there, silver ore. So when the drill itself starts drilling out whatever ore you've set that sorter to, it'll start pushing it to this connector and actually trigger an event controller and timer to tell this drill to stop drilling down and start extending out and start drilling out like a plate. What it'll do, it'll pretty much do this, but on a massive kind of scale. As on Pertam, all your ores will spawn in a plate formation just under the surface of the planet. And obviously the rarer types like silver, gold, platinum, all that sorts of stuff, will be a lot further down like magnesium is it's quite insane actually but let's get this operation now what i plan on doing because it is directly behind the actual mountain of our base let's go ahead and just go into the remote block and fly this on over there nice and easy so 
We'll get into that control in just a second. Let's disconnect this as I've just printed it up nice and easy. Just get rid of it like that. It'll start dropping a little bit, but all the thrusters should be on and there's it locking nice and easy. So let's just sit on the top of it, go into the remote control and let's get in control. I need to go to the uh, G menu and get the landing gear just here so we can actually unlock and move right where we are now. So let's unlock and turn them off so it won't re-lock instantly because I've got the auto lock function on the landing gear. As I did have a previous function in this drill to when it gets to the GPS through its like AI abilities and things like that, um, it would automatically start. But then I realized once the drill actually finishes and resets itself, it will not be the exact same GPS unless you place the GPS or waypoint, whatever it is, with our drone we printed just before. It won't work. That'll be explained, all that and more. I just need to try and get this around a little bit more. Let's just see if we can get a little bit higher. And move a little faster. So while this is moving, that's the silver over there. Excellent. Let's go to the AI recorder, also the AI basic. We need to get a new GPS, drill silver. Let's add that one and tell it to auto... Whoop. Auto drone landings, just start that timer and remove the old one. Just leave it as is, no problem. Let's just get a little bit closer, just to give the AIs a little bit of a better chance to reach their destination. Let's just um, fly down just a little bit because we don't need to be up so high. There we go. Much better, much better. So it shouldn't be too far away from here. We shouldn't be too far off. And this way we'll be able to use the right exit of the drone hub to get our drone to come on over here. So what we can do now is it will eventually start slowing down, but let's get all the way out to our character. Let's go to the auto pilot timer and let's just trigger that timer right there. That's gonna tell it to go on that automatic pilot function and go over and do that. But before we do that, oh, oh crap, wrong button. I turned the dampeners off and all that. All I wanted to do is just lock to the grid. Thank you, I keep missing it and turn the landing gear back on that I had forgotten. So what this does is that it uses that AI basic function instead of the recorder block specifically so it goes up and over onto this GPS we have just here. And since it is placed directly in the middle of that ore patch with my player, so it's like almost on the surface of the planet, it does some weird things with these AI blocks. Instead of going directly in the middle of the GPS with its AI basic block, which I think it could be just, uh, it's that one just there. Instead of getting the GPS to go right in the middle of that, it'll just go close to it and actually line up this rotor and the drills directly above with this. Once it reaches that, it'll trigger an event controller that'll tell it to actually push itself down at a reasonable speed. If it goes over a certain speed, it just turns off that overridden thruster that we just see now, pushing it down nice and easy. Instead of it starting up like I had in a previous episode, as soon as it automatically locks like it just did, we need to get our drone to place those waypoints here. So let's go ahead and fly back to the base. Let's just make sure we got plenty of fuel. We might need to get some on the way back. And since we're coming from this entrance, I've actually got a few little sneaky tunnels and all that sorts of stuff on each of these doors, just so we don't have to like go in so weirdly. So I've got one just here. They're all really the same on the same right side. So I might use this one here because it's quite cool. Automatic function on the doors to actually automatically close and open. It's just a mod that just automates that sorts of stuff really nice and easy it's in my um uh mod uh mod collection on the steam workshop in the description below so you're more than happy to check that one out this thing should be more than full so let's go ahead and just quickly quickly get more um uh, hydrogen that one there that's the word i was looking for and we got that thing off excellent this is my smartest ai cargo drone this thing is absolutely insane it uses the ai also the ai recorder blocks but i need the remote control to get in control of it to actually place those waypoints themselves so unfortunately 
it's actually forgotten some of the commands I've placed in the blueprint with this one here. So what I want to do is I need to go into the H2 swap and turn that on now. So it's got all the thrusters, all that sorts of stuff, and then let's just disconnect that like, no, like that, nice and easy. Let's go back on top and go to the remote block and let's go ahead and fly it. Let's go into the first camera. Should have more than enough. So what we want to do is we want to probably come on over here and start from this right here. So let's go ahead and set this up right now. Let's just flick it around nice and easy. Get into the first person camera. Uh, what I want to do is I need to trigger that H2 timer. Whoop, wrong one. G, thank you. H2 swap, I thought it was. So I can just trigger that now. Let's go and select the right one. So we need to use and place the add waypoints to the to drill recorder. So there's two AI blocks, two AI recorders on this, one that goes to the drill, and then one that comes home. It can be done with one AI recorder, but because this has so many other different functions in it, I've separated it so it has the ability to trigger a flea timer that gets it to do a whole lot of stuff. It's absolutely insane what this thing can do, but we need to set it out. Uh, let's go to the AI drill and we need to delete all of these that we have there. So let's get rid of all those and we'll need to get rid of all of those. Fantastic. We've got a clean drill, a uh, clean drone. Let's get this on going. So what we wanted to do is we need to get our thrusters back and what it will need to do is that it needs to fly on over here, getting ready to go through the actual exit right here. And that's going to be our first waypoint to be placed. So button eight and then let's just go ahead and fly out it hits that sensor it opens the door nice and fast we just need to tell it to slow down and let's just go out of there so the door can close nice and easy and it's nice and clear go back into the drone again and then let's place another waypoint right here that's it let's go over to the drill place another one that's just above the docking connector itself that allows it to get just better stability as it comes on down. And then we'll place our last one on the connector itself where it is right now before triggering off this drill drone. That's very important we do that before it's trigger because otherwise if it's in the middle of drilling out, the connector will not be in the exact same spot whatsoever because it's got a piston right underneath the connector that will move it and move it away from the GPS. So there we go right there. I'm actually going to go in here and get the connector right there so there's no confusion. Uh, what I need to do is turn the... Uh, I need to lock the connector so we are nice and close and just fly up just a little bit just to clear it. Let's place our third waypoint on the to drill recorder and then just fly on down nice and easy. Before we connect up, let's trigger the H2 timer again to turn off our thrusters and to turn off the stockpile on our hydrogen just so it's nice and easy. We drop right on the connector. There's no mistake. And let's place our last waypoint right there. Let's trigger the timer to get our thrusters and the hydrogen and all that sorts of stuff. Connect and then let's fly away nice and easy. So let's just fly back up about the same sort of height we place the third waypoint and let's place the first waypoint we have on this new AI recorder the one that's telling the drone to go home so let's place the first one by pressing button 9 right there what we need to go is back to the base because that's what this recorder is wanting it to do let's just go ahead and set this out and since there's nothing in the way, because the drones work only if precision mode is on and collision avoidance is off. Make sure that those, are, those two criteria are met or your drones will not work. So what we need to do is we just need to fly in range of this sensor. So it opens the door just like so. And let's just line it up nice and easy. I think that's about halfway in. Let's place our second waypoint on that to home recorder block. Let's fly on in. Just nice and even, just like so. And let's place the third waypoint, button nine again, and fly on over to the connector. 
Get camera down. Button two. Here we go. Fly on down. Let's make sure we're directly on the connector itself. Button five. And place the last waypoint on the Tahome recorder just like that. Let's lock up to the base. Actually, I may leave the drone separated so there's no confusion on what we need to add, where we need to add it. Oh, fell through the gap. Let's fix that. And what we need to do is just add a few things onto that recorder block. And the reason why I've separated this grid is so you're not trying to trigger something else on another drone that's named the same thing. So make sure they're nice and separated so there's no confusion. Let's start off with the AI recorder to the drill. And what we want it to do is just go right behind us, right out front near the door, right above the drill. When it comes down on the connector of the drill, we need to, to set it up to start a really weird connection method. It's going to be very weird, so we just need to turn that 0.1 speed limit on when it gets to the drills connector on waypoint four. That's all we need to do on that one. Let's go when it gets, or oh, sorry, when it's on its way back home, it goes above the drill, in front of the door, just in front of the door, just there, oh, fell through the gap again, goes there. And when it gets back where we are right now on this recorder, let's go to it again. When it gets exactly where we are now on waypoint four above the home docks connector, we just want it to start the unload timer. That's all we want it to do. No problems, no issues. That's absolutely all you need to do. So let's switch lock that. Let's do a quick save and let's hope everything works out because drones can be very, very, very temperamental. Let's get the trigger. It is in the on function, even though it's got many different abilities to tell if the battery is full, which it obviously is not at the moment, but I have bypassed that when you first print it up. But when it comes back, it won't allow you to trigger it up until its battery is completely full. So just note that for the future. There's many things with this drone that I'm sure everyone's going to maybe get confused. But if you get confused, let me know. And this didn't trigger out. I've just gone ahead and triggered up this drill. So it's actually drilling out as we speak. And it's finally started hitting that silver ore that we can see just there. So that's very nice. Instead of the drone getting here and just waiting for this drill to actually find the ore itself to actually then push into the connector to then go into the drone, it will then now fill up and then return back. So what we need to do is just go into the trigger timer block, just nice and easy. I'm just gonna start it up and let's watch the magic happen on all four of those waypoints on each of those AI recorder blocks. One to the drill and one back home. So there's the first waypoint right there. Second point is just on the outside of this door. Nice and easy. There goes the increased velocity on that hinge. Comes on out nice and easy, door closes up. There's the second waypoint we just hit. The third one is right above that drill and the fourth one is on the connector of the drill, which is not there anymore. So I'll just flick to my spectator camera. As you can see, the piston down the bottom here is actually retracted in as well as them extending outwards. So that waypoint that we placed probably about here-ish isn't right above the connector anymore. So that's why I've told the cargo drone itself on this AI recorder block, this one to the drill, to turn on an event controller point one, this one here specifically, that will tell it to turn an overridden thruster on and off, whether it is close enough to that connector or not. So here we go down here. I'll just zip on down before it and it's gonna turn on and off that overridden thruster to push it closer and closer towards this connector nice and easy because obviously that GPS does not exist anymore or the waypoint, whatever it may be. It'll drop on down, trigger that H2 timer and it starts collecting everything nice and easy. So let's go into the cargo event controller. The one telling it to, to see if it's cargo in the drone is full or not and whether or not it should trigger that RTB timer to tell it to go back home nice and easy. So we're just waiting on the fourth and last cargo good cargo container in the drone to go ahead and trigger off just like that. And it's gonna go ahead on that second AI recorder block. 
There's the first AI waypoint right there, nice and easy. And the next one is right in front of the door. Another one right in on the other side. And let's get on this. Let's get there. This should be figuring itself out. Make sure that your AIs are always in the collision avoidance off and precision mode on setting or they will not work. It's the only way I've been able to get these drones to actually work as they intend to be, or as I've actually told them to do. So this one should go ahead and go to that second waypoint, go on into the drone hub and zip on down over to the connector nice and easy. And now in our survival, we have silver and we probably have a lot of silver, to be honest. 2,000, 9,000 times four is absolutely fantastic that'll keep our refineries busy for quite some time and i do have to say the enemies are encroaching closer and closer ever since i got this new space elevator in this thing is absolutely insane and i can't wait to show you it in the next episode let's get rid of all those little signals and things like that we don't need them here we are here we are coming on to that second waypoint and yes i've had to do two different recordings for this one episode just because i'm still getting over the flu and my voice is uh not a hundred percent just yet which is why uh, i've been on hiatus for just a little bit i haven't been able to talk here's that second waypoint nice and easy there goes the door we should probably have more than enough fuel yep more than 50% fuel to get all this done. Easy, easy as. So we'll just zip on in. I'll just beat it in. It'll hit a secondary sensor just like that. And there goes the door nice and easy. So there's that third waypoint on the to home AI recorder block. And then it should come on over to the fourth one. Start that unload timer. That'll tell it to change a few things. Make sure that it's safe to come home because it's flea timer will trigger if it doesn't connect on your home base or you don't connect on your drills base on your drill platform and it will trigger some other sorts of things and tell you what failed, what didn't fail as well as saying, yes, you collected ore in the last run and there were no errors. So that's just about everything for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Make sure you stick around to the next episode. Like, comment, subscribe as always, and stay sharp till then. See ya.